Chameleon is a unique character for me to discuss in that we had very little time to get to know him. I'll use the masculine pronouns as the character almost universally adopted male appearances and voices. What's more, the the behind-the-scenes nature of the character is what led to that character being the companion who spent the most time locked in the cupboard. If you had missed the two-part The King's Demons, you would have no idea who the hell this robot lying on the floor in Planet of Fire was. That's not the kind of thing that would happen to a character under ordinary circumstances, so let's discuss the extraordinary circumstances that surround Chameleon. When John Nathan Turner took over with season 18, the Doctor's robot dog K-9 was beginning its fourth season. K-9 was popular, but introduced other problems as well, both technical and in the writing room. Script editor Chris Bidmead lobbied hard for the removal of K-9, and J&T was in agreement. But it seemed there was a sense of regret to that, because he also pushed the BBC to give him a chance to put out a show based on K-9 and Sarah Jane Smith, called K-9 and Company. He did everything that he could to get that show off the ground, and while the ratings for it were good, the politics at the BBC refused to allow the one-off to go to a full series no matter how well it did. This frustration was no doubt on his mind when a brochure arrived from CP Cybernetics. The brochure was to promote this robot as a marketing tool, effectively a portable, programmable version of entertainment animatronics, such as in Chuck E. Cheese. Having this unique talking figure on hand, well, the curious crowds would be sure to flock to your store or booth, or so the reasoning went. At CP Cybernetics were two men, Mike Power and Chris Padmore, the former responsible for the software and the latter for the hardware. J&T was very enthusiastic about the possibilities that this could present, a new and improved K-9, and something that would help draw further interest into the show with this unique addition to it. In early season 20, he was already telling star Peter Davison about the show's new robot that was going to be able to walk and speak and gesture and everything. The speaking was done by creating a tape, and then the mouth would then move based upon that audio tape. Perfectly fine for its intended purpose. A problem, though, if you need to seem like it was interacting with someone, because the tape plays what the tape plays. It doesn't care if your actors are done talking or not. But with J&T's enthusiasm, they essentially launched with an unproven prototype rather than a fully tested and developed unit. And that was the problem. Chameleon, in robot form, was quite limited in its first appearance, and that was by design. It was intended to keep it on the back burner here. Making the character a shapeshifter thus allowed them a way to prominently feature Chameleon without needing to depend upon the robot itself all that much, which is a smart move. But while the final result for the initial story was alright for a first try, things were completely upended because Mike Power, who was an avid sailor, died due to a boating accident. Since they were essentially still developing a working version of Chameleon, the notes were woefully incomplete as far as the programming went, and they were left with a very expensive paperweight in the end. Power's death would be the first of what would be jokingly called the Chameleon Curse, considering that he, everyone who wrote a Chameleon episode, including the one with the deleted scene, every actor who played Chameleon for more than a few minutes, an author who wrote a book with Chameleon in it, and J&T himself, have all died. Of course, many people who were connected with Chameleon are perfectly fine today, including Davison himself, who was quite pleased with being able to shoot the damn thing once and for all. But without power to help further refine and improve the prop, it was really a lost cause. The single deleted scene in The Awakening for Chameleon was the only effort anywhere else in the series to even acknowledge his existence until his swan song in Planet of Fire, and a brief appearance as a hallucination in Caves of Androzani, with just his head shown. So with that, we can see why the character was sidelined, as without knowledge of where they were going with the prop, they had little idea where to go with the character. Chameleon's character path, then, is pretty difficult to track, as it's one that begins and ends with him as the mental puppet of others, with little time in between to explore his own character. The character was looked at to some degree in some of the spin-off fiction, but since these works can often be contradictory or dubious, 
In this case, we're just going to stick with recorded footage to examine his character, even if that does limit options somewhat. In-universe, Chameleon is one of many shape-changing robots used as weapons during an invasion of the planet Zephyrus. Chameleon's mind can be dominated by others with strong wills. This presumably being a convenient means of controlling the changeling, as well as ensuring the ultimate protection from rebellion. And yet, Chameleon is possessing a free will. This could be a deliberate intent on his creator's part, to ensure that the changeling would be capable of adapting to situations once he has infiltrated enemy ranks. However, adaptive thinking doesn't necessarily require free will. It could be that continuing to approve the adaptive capabilities of their spies eventually led the chameleons, or chameleons specifically, to gain sapience and through that free will. It could indeed be speculated that this was the reason the invasion was terminated and Chameleon left behind. The invaders could no longer ensure their agents would continue to obey instructions if mental control was ever broken. Whatever the reason, Chameleon was eventually reactivated and dominated by the will of the Master for use in his schemes, the first being that of impersonating King John. And yet, it's unlikely that the Master, facing disruption by the Doctor's presence, would devote his thoughts every second to dominating Chameleon's mind. I mean, certainly those in public, but when the robot was in private, there would be no need. Indeed, it's probable that when he reverted to his true form in that story, that this was the Master releasing his hold for the moment so he could fully devote his thoughts to dealing with the Doctor. If so, that means that picking up the lute and singing was entirely Chameleon's own idea, or at least he found the suggestion by the master to be worth doing. And the song he sings, it's a song glorifying the upcoming crusade, which is appropriate given that he was created to be an instrument of war. It might be that he found it fascinating to glorify with harmonic beauty a task which he likely knew from personal experience lacked both harmony and beauty. Knowing Chameleon's personality can be difficult since he can be dominated by powerful minds such as the Doctor and the Master, but I think we can say that he is himself whenever the Master is not involved. For the Doctor to manipulate Chameleon in that manner, even if it was just a harmless prank, would require a cruelty that he, especially in this incarnation, doesn't seem to possess. Thus, I think we can safely say that this behavior we see whenever the Master is gone is Chameleon operating on his own initiative. What we see is therefore interesting, as he shows great interest in joining the Doctor on his travels. If we factor in the behavior seen in the deleted scene in Awakening, something that I normally wouldn't do, but since we have so precious little to work with, I think it justifies the exception because it shows what they were trying to accomplish in the show for the character. If we look at this behavior, we can also add that Chameleon took an interest in learning as he accessed the TARDIS systems to expand his understanding. He also took that opportunity to annoy Tegan, who had been quite open in her mistrust of Chameleon, by using his mimicry to employ the voices of others. This point suggests that he is capable of emotions to some degree, as there seems few other reasons for him to deliberately push her buttons other than to take a small amount of pleasure in her reaction. Looking at these actions, I think there's two explanations for Chameleon's behavior, his decision to join the TARDIS crew and to access what information he can, why he would do that. One could be that at his core is a desire to gain knowledge, something his builders would no doubt put into a tool intended to infiltrate enemy lines, that even without them driving him, Chameleon would still seek out knowledge. However, what makes me disinclined to think this is that Chameleon remained on the ship for all of those adventures in between. If he desired knowledge, he could have joined the Doctor and experienced things firsthand and chose not to. Also, when the Master relinquishes control in 13th century England, Chameleon doesn't begin reading books. He passes the time singing and playing music. I think the more likely motivation for Chameleon is related to that, but not exactly that. Knowledge is a means towards an end for him, but that's not the end itself. If you look at Chameleon's existence, he was a tool for one master, and then a tool for another, and then taken away by someone who chose not to dominate his will with their own, meaning that for the first time, Chameleon was left with no compelling direction, a possibility that probably never occurred to him before. 
Chameleon is seeking knowledge not because it is his purpose, but to help him find a purpose. When he was a slave, there was nothing else to do but pass the time until his master gave the next command. Now there was, optimistically, not going to be a next command, and it would be down to him to decide what it would be. And his clear loyalty to the doctor, shown when the connection to the master was broken in the TARDIS during Planet of Fire, when his first concern was in helping the doctor, not following whoever had the strongest will, it suggests that he's grateful for this opportunity that has been presented to him. Now, if this is true, then it makes his fall all the more tragic, that Chameleon concluded that there's no place in the universe for him in the end, that eventually, no matter what he did, he would once again be enslaved, and he couldn't live like that anymore. The doctor's mercy killing is likewise tragic. In The King's Demons, he swiped the master's tissue compressor from the man's hand, only for the master to gloat that, because of his scruples, it was a weapon the doctor would never use. Now, the doctor takes it up and uses it not only to kill, but to kill his own companion. It shows just how much he understood Chameleon's need for the only true freedom that he could ever have, even if it could only be found in his own death. All hail the Overlord! 